Welcome to the Ask Ralph podcast, where listening to an experienced financial professional can help you make sense of confusing questions, current headlines, and industry trends about taxes, small business, financial decision-making, investment strategies, and even the art of proper budgeting, as Ralph makes the complex simple by sharing his real-world knowledge with all things financial. Now here's your host, Ralph Eastep Jr., Welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. Today, I'm going to talk about some changes that the IRS is doing as it relates to the Form 1099-K. Now, a lot of people will probably say, Ralph, what in the world are you talking about? Well, merchants who collect payments by credit card have been receiving these 1099-K forms for, oh, many years now. And a few years back, the IRS decided that they were going to require more vendors or more merchants to issue these 1099s to to people who use their platforms. Now, why is this relevant to our discussion today? Well, basically, it, it basically would affect anybody who uses any kind of platform to exchange, you know, goods or services and money. So what I'm talking about here is Venmo, Cash App, and all those sort of things. Now, when the law was changed, the IRS actually built into the law that if you had more than $600 in transactions in a current year, then you would be receiving one of these 1099K forms. Now, this has been going on for a few years. And um, back in 2022, uh, with the last tax season, there were some talk about implementing this finally. Well, just the other day on November 21st, the IRS announces a delay in 1099K reporting thresholds for third-party platform payments for 2023. So what is this all about? Well, there was a lot of feedback coming in from taxpayers, tax professionals, and payment processors payment processors, and the IRS has decided with their notice 2023-74 that they are going to, delay, going to delay the new $600 form 1099-K. So what the IRS is going to do is they're going to continue to work to implement the new law, and the agency will treat 2023 as an additional transact, uh, transition year. This will reduce the potential confusion caused by the distribution of an estimated 44 million forms sent to many taxpayers who wouldn't expect one and may not have a tax obligation. As a result, reporting will not be required unless the taxpayer receives over $20,000 and has more than 200 transactions in 2023. So what the basically the IRS is deciding to do is they're going to delay this until I don't know when. Uh, certainly not going to be for 2023. But why this is important is if you if you do anything on Venmo or Cash App, let's say you know that you put some things on Craigslist for sale, or you list things on Facebook Marketplace, and the person you're exchanging that with wants to pay with one of these cash payment apps. Technically, the IRS is going to require those cash payment um, re- mer- merchants to report these things. And what's going to happen is a bunch of taxpayers, anybody who collected more than six hundred dollars in 2023 tax year would have gotten this 1099k form around the time that they get their w-2s and other tax items and they would have been befuddled with what do i do with this on my tax return so what the irs says in their press release is given the complexity of the new provision the large number of individual taxpayers affected and a need for stakeholders to have certainty with enough lead time the irs is planning for a threshold of five thousand dollars for tax year 2024 as a result of a phase in to implement the six hundred dollar reporting threshold enacted under the american rescue plan so they're already telling us for 2024 they're going to reduce it from twenty thousand down to five thousand so following the feedback from the tax community, the IRS is also looking to make updates to Form 1040 and related schedules for 2024 that would make the reporting process easier for taxpayers. Changes to the Form 1040 series, the core tax form for more than 150 million taxpayers, are complex and take time. Delaying changes to tax year 2024 allows additional feedback. And this is a direct quote from Commissioner Danny Werfel. 
What Danny said is, we spent many months gathering feedback from third-party groups and others, and it became increasingly clear that we need additional time to effectively implement the new reporting requirements. So what he goes on to say is, taking this phase-in approach is the right thing to do for tax purposes of tax administration, and it prevents unnecessary confusion as we continue to look at changes to the Form 1040. It's clear the additional delay for tax year 2023 will avoid problems for taxpayers, tax professionals, and others in this area. See, what this is all about is this um, American Rescue Plan that was signed into law required third-party settlement organizations. They call these TPSOs, which include popular payment apps and online marketplace to report payments of more than $600 for the sale of goods and services on a Form 1099-K starting in 2022. These forms will go to the IRS and to taxpayers and would help taxpayers fill out their tax returns. Before this ARP, or the American Rescue Plan, the reporting requirement applied only to sales of goods and services involving more than 200 transactions per year, totaling over 20000 Now, like I said, they delayed that in 2022 as well. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. Reporting requirements do not apply to personal transactions such as birthday or holiday gifts, sharing the cost of a car ride or a meal, or paying a family member or another for a household bill. These payments are not taxable and should not be recorded on the 1099-K. Well, here's the problem. If you're using these apps and you don't specifically mark that these things are the type of payments which are excluded, then these um, merchant service platforms, I'll call them, are going to be required to send these things to you. However, And this is a big however that talks about here in this press release. The casual sale of goods and services, including selling used personal volumes like clothing, furniture, and other household items for a loss could generate a 1099K for many people, even if the seller has no tax liability for these sales. What are they talking about here? So let's use a simple example. Let's say that you decide to sell your kitchen table and chairs on Facebook Marketplace. And let's just say for sake of our example, you paid $2,000 for these items when you originally purchased them. Well, you put them on Facebook Marketplace and you're just trying to you know, get rid of them so that you can have more room to buy something new. And let's just say you make a sale for $200. So you paid $2,000 for this table set. Now you're going to sell for $200. Well, here's the problem. Under these new rules, the 1099K is going to be sent to you showing $200 in income. That would have to be reported on your tax return. Well, in this particular case, you didn't have a $200 sale or $200 economic benefit. You actually lost $1,800 because that table set cost you $2,000 and you only sold it for $200. So it could cause a lot of confusion, especially based on the fact that generally you can't deduct losses on personal items like that. And this is really the core of this. The complexity in distinguishing between these type of transactions factored into the IRS decision to delay the reporting requirements an additional year and plan for a threshold of $5,000 in 2024 to phase this in. Now, the IRS is still inviting feedback on this threshold of $5,000 for tax year 2024 and other elements of the reporting requirements, including how best to focus reporting on taxable transactions. Now, The commissioner goes on to say the IRS will use additional time to continue carefully crafting a way forward to minimize the burden. We want to make this as easy as possible for taxpayers. We'll work to make the new reporting requirements easier for them and work closely with third-party groups, tax professionals, and others to find the smoothest part to ensure compliance with the law. This is consistent with our strategic operating plan. The IRS is focused on meeting taxpayers where they are and helping them get it right the first time. But this is really a big deal, folks. If you are going to be selling things online, and a lot of us do this throughout the year, you have to pay particular attention because in 2024, if the aggregate amount, you know, the total amount that you sell is more than $5,000, then you're going to have to get this 1099K form and you're going to have to put it on your tax return. Now, The real reason behind all of this, in my view, is this is the IRS's attempt to get some more of the underground economy, which is not being reported. So if you're operating a small business that's not, you know, wink, wink, not a small business, and you're taking these cash apps or Venmo, you need to understand that the IRS is going to be requiring these, these marketplaces to report those sales. Well, guess what? They're going to send a copy to the IRS, 
And if you don't report that in your tax return, you're going to get a notice that says, hey, wait a second, we got a 1099K form from such and such. Let's use Venmo as an example. And we checked your 2024 tax return, and we don't see where you have reported this income. So it's a big deal, folks. So it's something to really be on the lookout for. Um, I talk to my clients about this all the time. If you're using any of these cash apps, then make sure you're coding those transactions as personal transactions. You know, if you if you're out to dinner with somebody and you split a bill and you send, you know, let's just say you're out with your friend Tony and you split the bill, you need to make sure you mark that transfer to Tony as being personal in nature. Ask Ralph. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to take a few minutes and just tell you about the latest book I've written. The name of the book is Mastering Your Finances, Your Personal Guide to Financial Freedom. And listen, folks, it's not just a book. This is an actual roadmap to securing a thriving financial future. As a seasoned accountant, I penned this book to put the power of financial planning right at your fingertips. This book will transform your financial landscape from a confusing maze of numbers and jargon to a clear and well-trodden path towards prosperity. This book is written for Every potential user from the first time person trying to get their finances in order to a well seasoned person who's been trying to do this for a long time. So, what I want you to do is to discover the profound impact of strategic planning as you journey through real life examples, practical tips, and insightful advice. This book is more than a guide, it's a lifeline to financial literacy and independence. This is a way for you to take control of your financial destiny and embrace the freedom that comes with financial stability. This book is an essential read for anyone seeking to navigate the world of personal finance with confidence and ease. The book is available right now on Amazon.com. You just search for the name Ralph Estep, and you can get it either on paperback or on Kindle. So check it out when you get a chance. And now back to the podcast. Thank you for joining us on the Ask Ralph podcast. And with the simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. And remember, financial issues don't have to be complicated. Just Ask Ralph. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Saggio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.